What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be talking about rookie mistakes that you new backpackers always make because you're stupid. No, I'm just kidding. I thought this was a really unique idea. I don't think anyone's ever done a video on backpacking beginner mistakes before, so hopefully you guys enjoy this. And if you do, or you think you will, or you even if you don't, you should hit that subscribe button and help me get this channel to 200,000 subscribers. That's the goal. Smash it. All right. First mistake. This would be not taking care of your feet. You know those suckers, like these guys? There it is. Yeah, you need to uh, take care of those feet because if you don't, you're gonna be screwed. It's extremely common for new backpackers to absolutely just shred their feet on their first couple trips. This happened to me on my very first backpacking trip ever. I wore dress socks instead of actual hiking socks. And uh, yeah, I pretty much broke my toe actually and ended up having my toenail surgically almost removed, basically removed, cut in half. I lost half my toenail, it sucked. Now like pretty much anything when you're first starting out in backpacking, it's hard to just nail it right off the bat. It takes some experience to learn, but just try to be mindful of taking care of your feet. Make sure you dry them out if it rains or you have to cross a river or something. If you get any blisters, hop on that shit before it turns into a nightmare yeah. scenario. Yeah. It gets pretty deep there. Yeah, she's about balls deep. Oh geez. I'm not an expert on blister care. I'm not a doctor. I don't even, I've never even backpacked before, to be honest. I'm just making this shit up. So I'm not gonna tell you exactly how to deal with blisters, but you can go look that up. You can figure it out. And if your feet are getting really sore and they're hurting, if, if you're ever in like a bunch of pain, especially your feet, that's not normal. You're not supposed to just suck it up and deal with it. Yeah, it's gonna be a little sore, but if they're really hurting, Maybe you gotta call the trip early. Maybe you gotta soak your feet in a cold stream. Maybe you gotta elevate them. Just take care of your feet. Don't make that mistake. Socks. We're out humping. I want you boys to remember to change your socks whenever we stop. The second mistake is one that I was guilty of. I'm not gonna lie. Washing your dishes in a water source. Don't do that. Ah. Now listen, I know people love to get up on their high horses, which I fucking hate horses, by the way and be all like, leave no trace, like elite, you know, and be like, oh, like, you don't care about the environment if you do this. Listen, it makes sense that you would want to wash your dishes in a water source. It's just a little bit of food scraps. It's not that big a deal. You know, I'm, I'm not hating on anyone who's done this before, but you shouldn't do it. And the, the main reason why is because people are probably gonna be drinking out of that same water source. And no one wants to be going to drink their water, their nice clean mountain water. And then all of a sudden there's like a bean floating in it because somebody washed their freaking dishes in the water. You, you don't want to do that, man. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to grab your water. You're going to grab your dirty dish. You're going to walk well away from the trail or well away from the campsites and well away from any water sources. You're going to put a little bit of water in that pot. You're going to scrub it around. Use your finger. If you want to bring a little sponge, you're an idiot, but you can do that too. I'm just kidding. Your, your sponges are okay. I'm pro sponge. You're going to clean it off and then you're going to kind of swish the water around and then you're going to broadcast it. Nice and nice and far, nice and wide away from where anyone's gonna see it. And of course, if there's like a lot of food left in your pot, you can't just be spraying chunks of food everywhere. It's gonna be like basically already clean. That's what you're gonna do. Don't be washing it in the water source. Keep those water sources clean. But if you do wanna put something in water, I recommend you fill up your bottles first, you filter it, and then uh, you put some Drink Element in it, dude. Guys, Drink Element is the number one by far, by the way, electrolyte drink mix that you should be drinking when you're hiking. So here's the deal, you're going along, Maybe you're going uphill. Maybe you're even going downhill. Whatever you're doing, you're getting really sweaty. It's great to stay hydrated and drink water to replace that sweat, but you don't want to just replace that water, dude. You got to replace the electrolytes that you're sweating now. If you don't do that, guess what? You're going to get extra tired. You're going to be fatigued. Your muscles are going to cramp up. We've all experienced this before. You don't want to just replace the electrolytes with whatever crap you find at Walmart. You want to find an electrolyte drink mix that is healthy and tastes good. Oh, that's the good stuff. Drink Element has both of those things. This is raspberry salt, one of my favorites for sure. We also got orange salt right here, another just absolute classic. With Drink Element, you cannot go wrong with any of their flavors. Citrus salt is another good one, and then they also got some crazy flavors, crazy awesome like lemon habanero, mango chili, chocolate salt, or they even have an unflavored one if for some reason none of this sounds good to you. It's healthy and it is good for you when you are sweating. So what I want you to do is go to drinkelement.com slash kylehateshiking, that is drinklmnt.com slash kylehateshiking, go make an order, 
And then when you do, you're gonna get to try every single awesome flavor that they have because they're gonna throw in a sample pack of eight different flavors with your order. You're gonna get to try them all, man. One more time, drinklmnt.com slash kylehateshiking. I will also have a link to it in the description. Go get your free sample pack. And thank you so much to Drink Element for continuing to support my content. Back to the rookie mistakes. Uh, I made a rookie mistake by filming outside in the spring in the Northeast where the bugs are just horrendous. I fucking hate bugs, dude. Fucking bugs, dude. I should've just gone inside. Can you guys see these freaking black flies? God damn. This next mistake is bringing a book when you're back. Backpack. Now listen, so this is like a pretty goofy one, obviously like it's not that big a deal, but like one of the number one things I see people bring when they're first starting out and then very quickly go on to realize that they don't need is a hardcover book. Now there's nothing wrong with reading. I myself cannot read. I'm very illiterate. <laughs> That's why I watch YouTube instead. If you want to read, dude, you got one of these guys, right? You, you got a phone, maybe even a Kindle. I mean, I probably still wouldn't bring a Kindle, but it's probably lighter than a book. I don't know what else I can say about this one. Just don't, don't, don't bring a Book. You're probably gonna be too tired to read it. Even if you do, it's just not worth the wait when you can have it on your phone or maybe an audio book, or maybe you could stop being a fucking nerd and just not read at all. <laughs> This next rookie mistake that you should not make is overexerting yourself and pushing yourself too hard when you're first starting out. Now I know you watch my videos and Darwin's videos and Dixie's videos and Dan Becker's videos. Well, maybe not his actually. And you see these guys going super, super hard and you're like, okay, well that's just what you do. I gotta put in 20 miles, 30 miles, 50 miles, a thousand miles in 10 minutes. No, so when you're first starting out, you can't be going that hard. That's what she said. <laughs> I got a question recently from someone on Patreon, which you guys should check out by the way. And this gentleman asked me, how do you hike 20 or 30 miles in a day? Like, how is that even possible? And the answer is you got to build up to it. I mean, I'm sure there's someone out there that just ripped 20 miles on their very first day and then just increase it from there. But for the vast majority of us, you can't be doing that because if you do, you're going to risk hurting yourself. And at the very least, you're probably just not going to have fun. It is great to build up to those big miles. It is fulfilling, I think, to hike big mile days and really push yourself. I see so many people when they first start out, myself included, just overexerting themselves, trying to do too much at the start. You're actually going to be better off maybe taking it a little bit easier than you are pushing yourself too too much and going too hard you're, you're gonna risk injury it's not gonna be fun and then you're gonna hate hiking like I do don't do that this next mistake is definitely something that rookies do but honestly this is something that experienced hikers do as well I still do this a lot this mistake is not bringing enough variety in your food when you're backpacking you might be like hmm I'm going backpacking I'm gonna take some pop tarts some some uh, beef jerky and a couple cliff bars and that'll be fine. But the thing is, you might like that food for a couple days, but when you're eating the same thing over and over and over and over and over and Dover, Delaware, D New Jersey, is that a city? When you're eating the same things over and over, you get sick of it. And, and the thing is, you, you have to be fueling yourself properly when you're hiking. You have to be eating a lot of calories. It's like a, Donuts are stuck together too. That's how they grow, man. <laughs> it's imperative, not only so that you can enjoy yourself, but also so that you can be safe and have the energy levels that you need to keep yourself going while you're out there. And so if you get sick of your food, you're gonna be lacking energy. It's just not a good situation. So bring a variety of food. That could even be like a variety of the flavors of the food. Let's say you love Pop-Tarts, which I don't know why you would unless you're 12. Instead of just bringing the frosted strawberry ones, which are probably the best, let's be honest, they still suck. Bring some other flavors. You get my point. It's pretty simple. Bring a variety of food. Don't make that mistake. This next beginner mistake is not storing your food properly when you are in bear country. Now, this is a little bit controversial. I don't know why. To me, I'm like, why would I want a bear to eat my food? I want to eat my food. I don't want to starve. So, of course, I'm going to take all the proper precautions to s s protect my food. But it's controversial because a lot of backpackers, experienced ones, are just like, nah, I don't need to bear hang, including the man who's editing this video. What's up, Luke? No, for real, I do understand this. A lot of the time you're tired at the end of the day. You don't want to hang your bear bag. It's too much work. Your shoulder's sore. You don't want to throw the rock. I get it. But if you're hiking in an area where bears are a known problem, you're hiking in a spot that bears frequent, there's signs up, there's lots of warnings and stuff, Dude, you gotta hang your food properly, okay? You gotta do it, you gotta protect your food. Maybe use a bear canister. You could stay up all night sitting next to your food with a shotgun if you have to. Do whatever you gotta do to protect your freaking food. Bears, they don't need your food, dude. There's so much shit they could eat, like, they could eat that, 
leaf over there, or these bugs. They don't need your Pop-Tarts and whatever other bullshit you brought. Protect your food. <laughs> I don't remember, I don't remember how you do that. This next mistake is underestimating elevation gain and loss when you're calculating your mileage for the day. This one is very understandable for beginners. When you're trying to plan out your day, you're probably gonna be thinking in terms of miles, right? You're like, okay, I know that I can hike 10 miles, so I'm gonna plan this day to be nine, 10, or 11 miles, somewhere in that ballpark. But what you might not be thinking about is if you're gonna to have to climb 7,000 feet of elevation gain within those nine miles, that's gonna be probably harder than it would be if you hiked 15 miles on easier terrain. Now, if you're on the Florida Trail, then you don't have to worry about this. And there's lots of other trails where you don't have to worry about this, but on like the AT, for instance, or on the PCT, on the CDT, on the XYZ, dude, a lot of these trails, you do have to factor in the elevation gain when you're planning your miles. And not just the elevation gain, like I said, you also have to factor in the elevation loss. Because if you got bad knees, dude, or just bad ankles, or just don't like going downhill, a lot of elevation loss can be almost as difficult, in some cases more difficult, than a lot of elevation gained. Motherfucker. So plan your days around the mileage, but just calculate how much elevation gain and loss you're gonna have over the course of your day as well to make sure that you are actually planning a day that is within your reasonable limits to stay safe. Fuck these things, dude. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, dude, hiking is so, so sick. Sick, dude. Yeah, you like that? I don't know what the fuck that was.